Structural linguistics is an approach to linguistics originating from the work of Swiss linguist Ferdinand de Saussure and is part of the overall approach of structuralism. De Saussure's course in general linguistics, published posthumously in 1916, stressed examining language as a static system of interconnected units. He is thus known as a father of modern linguistics for bringing about the shift from diatronic historical to synchronic non-historical analysis, as well as for introducing several basic dimensions of semiotic analysis that are still important today, such as syntagmatic and paradigmatic analysis or associations as Saussure was still calling them. Structural linguistics involves collecting a corpus of utterances and then attempting to classify all of the elements of the corpus at their different linguistic levels, the phonemes, morphemes, lexical categories, noun phrases, verb phrases, and sentence types. Two of Saussure's key methods were syntagmatic and paradigmatic analysis, which define units syntactically and lexically, respectively according to their contrast with the other units in the system. The foundation of structural linguistics is a sign, which in turn has two components, a signified is an idea or concept, while the signifier is a means of expressing the signified. The sign is thus the combined association of signifier and signified. Signs can be defined only by being placed in contrast with other signs which forms a basis of what later became the paradigmatic dimension of semiotic organization, that is, collections of terms slash entities that stand in opposition. This idea contrasted drastically with the idea that signs can be examined in isolation from a language and stressed Saussure's point that linguistics must treat language synchronically. Paradigmatic relations hold among sets of units that, in the early Saussurean renditions, exist in the mind such as a set distinguished phonologically by variation in their initial sound cat, bat, hat, mat, fat, or the morphologically distinguished set ran, run, running. The units of a set must have something in common with one another, but they must contrast too, otherwise they could not be distinguished from each other and would collapse into a single unit, which could not constitute a set on its own, since a set always consists of more than one unit. Syntagmatic relations, in contrast, are concerned with how units, once selected from their paradigmatic sets of oppositions, are chained together into structural holes. One further common confusion here is that syntagmatic relations, assumed to occur in time, are anchored in speech and are considered either diatronic, confusing syntagmatic with historical, or are part of parole, everyday speech confusing syntagmatic with performance and behavior and divorcing it from the linguistic system, or both. Both paradigmatic and syntagmatic organizations belong to the abstract system of language lang, French for language, or an abstract, platonic ideal. Different linguistic theories place different weight on the study of these dimensions, all structural and generative accounts, for example, pursue primarily characterizations of the syntagmatic dimension of the language system syntax, while functional approaches, such as systemic linguistics, focus on the paradigmatic. Both dimensions need to be appropriately included, however. Syntagmatic and paradigmatic relations provide the structural linguist with a tool for categorization for phonology, morphology and syntax. Take morphology, for example. The signs cat and cats are associated in the mind, producing an abstract paradigm of the word forms of cat. Comparing this with other paradigms of word forms, we can note that in the English language the plural often consists of little more than adding an s to the end of the word. Likewise, through paradigmatic and syntagmatic analysis, we can discover the syntax of sentences. For instance, Contrasting the syntagma je dois, I should, and dois je, should I, allows us to realize that in French we only have to invert the units to turn a statement into a question. We thus take syntagmatic evidence difference in structural configurations as indicators of paradigmatic relations, for example, in the present case, questions versus assertions. 
The most detailed account of the relationship between a paradigmatic organization of language as a motivator and classifier for syntagmatic configurations is that set out in the systemic network organization of systemic functional grammar, where paradigmatic relations and syntagmatic configurations each have their own separate formalization, related by realization constraints. Modern linguistic formalisms that work in terms of lattices of linguistic signs, such as head-driven phrase structure grammar, similarly begin to separate out an explicit level of paradigmatic organization.